Welcome to this video. Today we're going to be looking at one of the big challenges with these high performance Z series cameras which are capable of 4K video and have 20 or 40 megapixel sensors and that's how you get the data off of the card. Hi there and welcome back. In this video we're going to look at one of the challenges that comes with the Z series cameras and their great sensors that are capable of creating 4K videos and high resolution images. And that's how do you get the images off of the card and into your computer for processing. We're going to look at three different devices that you can use for doing that. We'll do a bit of a real world test of those to see what the performance levels are of each of them. And then we'll consider what are the benefits, the pros and cons of each of them. We're going to compare two different XQD card readers. We've got the Sony XQD card reader and the Lexar XQD card reader, which can both be bought for about £30, $30 um, separately from the camera. And we've got the USB-C to USB-A cable that came with the camera, and we'll look at connecting the camera directly to your computer to get the images off of the card. Before we get into the performance of the different devices, let's look at the test scenario. I've been using a Sony G-Series 64 gigabyte XQD card. It's got a theoretical read speed of 440 megabits per second and a write speed of 400 megabits per second. Obviously the read speed is what's important to us because we're going to be taking files off of the card onto um, my computer. Each of the card readers is USB-A Gen 3.1 um, capable, which means it's theoretically capable of reading and writing 10 gigabits per second, so much higher than the card capacity. And we've got a cable which is USB-C to USB-A Gen 3.1, so again a 10 gigabit per second transfer speed. We're going to be plugging each of these into the same USB-A Gen 3.1 socket on the computer and that's connected to an SSD which I have tested and has a write performance of about 497 megabits per second. So if we look at the end-to-end -end test scenario the constraining factor is actually the Sony's read speed of 440 megabits per second. So let's now consider what we're going to be transferring and I'm going to be doing two tests. I've got two folders on this card. One contains 10 gigabytes of video and the other one contains 10 gigabytes of still images. The video contains 26 files of MP4 video. They vary in size from 12 megabytes up to 1.5 gigabytes. And in terms of the still images we've got 196 raw files, so NEF files, which are from the Z7, so they're 54 megabytes each. For each of the devices I carried out two tests. I firstly copied the video files and pasted them into a folder on the SSD, and then I copied the still files and pasted those into the folder on the SSD, timing each one separately. So let's start by looking at the two XQD card readers and the first one being the Lexar card reader. Very simple, it's got a plastic body, it's got a USB-A 3.1 um, connector at one end and at the other end it's got a slot for the XQD card, one push to um, latch it in and then a push to release it. Very smooth and very simple. All you get in the box is the single card reader. If we now look at the Sony card reader, and this is the QDA SB1 card reader, there is a more expensive one which has not only an XQD card slot in it, but also an SD card slot in it. This is the simpler one. Again, like the um, Lexar version, at one end there's a cap you take off and there is a USB 3.1, um, USB-A 3.1 um, connector. And again, the card latches in and then you push it to release it. One slight niggle I've had with this card reader is that the card does snag sometimes and you have to wiggle it to get it out. The benefit of this card reader, the Sony one, is that you also get an extension cable. So if you can't fit the width of the card reader close into the USB port you're plugging it into, you can plug the 
connector into there and you've got a cable to then plug into your um, device. So you get slightly more in the pack with the Sony. And then finally the cable it's the one that came in the box with the camera from Nikon, so it's a USB-C for the camera end to a USB-A th generation 3.1 connector at the other end. Very simple, straightforward. So let's start off by looking at the card readers and the first one being the Lexar card reader. In terms of transferring the NEF files, the 10 gigabytes of NEF files, that took 34 seconds, which gives a transfer speed of 317 megabits per second. With the video files, the 26 MP4 files, 10 gigabytes in size in total, it took two seconds quicker. It was 32 seconds, which gave a transfer speed of 337 megabytes per second. If we now look at the Sony card reader, the 10 gigabytes of NEF files took 33 seconds, so one second quicker than the Lexar, which gives a transfer speed of 327 megabytes per second. And the video files, those 10 gigabytes of MP4 files, took 32 seconds, which is a, the same transfer speed of 337 megabits per second. So we have transfer speeds there of between 317 and 337 megabits per second against that theoretical maximum of the card which was the limiting factor of the system of 440 megabits per second so fairly good transfer speeds and not much between the two card readers if we now look at using the cable to connect the camera directly to the um, computer Remember that cable has a theoretical maximum of 10 gigabits per second. The results we got were slightly interesting in that the NEF files took 2 minutes 47 seconds to transfer which gives a transfer speed of 65 megabits per second and the video files took 2 minutes 24 seconds giving a transfer speed of 75 megabits per second. So in both cases, significantly lower than using either of the card readers. Now if we look at the specs of the camera rather than the cable, we see that the USB-C port on the camera is a generation 3.0 rather than a 3.1. Now that still shouldn't have made much of a difference because the difference between a generation 3.0 and a 3.1 is that the generation 3.0 is constrained to 5 gigabits per second transfer versus 10 gigabits for the generation 3.1. Still significantly higher than the theoretical constraint of the card being 440 megabits per second read speed. So it's obvious somewhere in the camera there is a constraining component or series of components in the system which reduces the theoretical performance of the system from 440 megabits per second down to 65 to 75 megabits per second. So in summary there's a clear performance difference between using either of the card readers and plugging your camera directly into the computer and using the cable that came with the camera. If you're out in the field and you don't have access to an XQD card reader, then using that cable is going to be fine. It's just going to take considerably longer and you just have to factor that into your workflow. And that may be okay for you. However, if you're using your Z-series camera to its full capabilities and perhaps recording 4K video or significant numbers of RAW files, then the relatively low cost of an XQD card reader will probably pay back in terms of the speed with which you can transfer those files from the card into your computer. I hope you found this relatively simple real-world test of three different devices for getting your images and videos off of the card and into your computer useful. If you have, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell below and you'll be notified of future videos. And let us know how you're getting the images from your camera into your computer in the comments below. Mm -hmm.